Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshiks mainframe channel. This is Moshiks. Happy New Year. And today we're going to be looking at an exciting new uh, collection of uh, source code that a person has just uploaded, uh, I think last week, into a GitHub repository. And this, the name of the person of the community contributor for our beloved MVS 3.8 uh, community is a person called Walter Muller and uh, he uh, did something uh, very interesting. He put together a list of source code uh, in all these different uh, compilers that you see here um, so that they can be submitted to MVS for either, either for testing the correct execution of those compilers that everything is installed properly or for benchmarking purposes uh, since some of those are quite um, CPU intensive. I haven't seen IO intensive uh, workload yet, but uh, there are certainly some CPU intensive workloads. And so today we're going to be looking at how to use this um, to stress test our MVS environment. Um, also very useful for comparing different um, hardware platforms to run our Hercules uh, in uh, emulator. And so, um, what I do is, uh, in this video, I'm going to be installing it and seeing ways to play with the, this collection of, uh, of uh, software that uh, Walter Muller has made available for us in open source. Um, quite a few of the, of the source code that he makes available is already present in TK4. Uh, if we open up um, our terminal here, I log in as 01. You know that we have in 3.4 in JC sys2 JCL lib here. We already have quite a bit of uh, sample code in there. Um, so there is a prime number solver for every language installed in TK4. So you have um, an Algol 6 implementation, which also Walter is reusing here in his collection. So not all of it is invented. Then he has some hello world, and then he has some uh, pi calculators, uh, pi number calculators. Uh, and so we have Algol, Assembler, three different versions of COBOL um, prime number solvers, one with the mem dynamic memory allocation and some without. Then Fortran G, Fortran H, which has an optimizer, Fortran, the what for Fortran, GCC, which is the new uh, C compiler, there's a, a, another C compiler for MVS written by uh, another fellow, the PL1F compiler, Pascal, and, simul and similar um, uh, programming languages. And then there is also some more here, test. You see here down further down, we have a test um, program in uh, every other, uh, for every program language installed in TK4. Uh, we even have an RRPG implementation, which, um, Walter does not have in his um, in his uh, test suite. I'm not sure if it's possible to program a prime number solver in RPG. Let's see, prime number in RPG. Let's see if that is even possible. Yeah, so not even sure if it's possible or not uh, to do an RPG because RPG is a programming language, but it's really a report writer. Um, comes back from the pluggable um, IBM mainframes of the 40s and 50s. So, but um, anyway, but it is uh, present in RP in TK4, and um, and Walter does not make one available here. I'll have a discussion with him and see if it's possible to find an implementation for uh, prime numbers and hello world should be certainly possible because it's not only prime numbers, it also has a hello world uh, implementation, for instance, this one, just hello world. So that is certainly possible in RPG. So I'll be talking to Walter with whom I already have uh, a dialogue ongoing uh, to, to also include um, RPG and then also I think um, there should be also something for XPL. I show how to uh, install XPL in um, XPL compiler. If you've seen this video, you see that 
Yeah. That we have possibly already in TK4, it's already installed. If not, it's very simple to go and obtain and install it. And so it should be possible to also have in Walter's test suite a solver for XPL. Um, certainly possible to do XPL as a full programming language. And so, um, so let's see how to get this done. The, it's really quite simple to get installed. Um, let's close this terminal session here. We won't be needing it. I have opened up here a PuTTY um, uh, session to my virtual machine uh, on my Intel Nook. Uh, this is a machine with two CPUs and six gigabytes of RAM. I have TK4 with MVS already running here. And um, uh, one change that I did from previous videos is I met now, uh, now made in PuTTY uh, directories visible in yellow because some of you have complained that directories are by default in PuTTY uh, visible in blue and blue on a back, black background is just very difficult to see so I changed it to yellow. For those of you who would like to know how to do that if you create a new session this is uh, my Intel Nook here uh, and you go to appearance of course I always make the font quite a bit bigger so that you, get, you people can see this well on your screens um, and then you go to colors, you go to where it says blue, ANSI blue, and you make these values here 255, green 255, and blue 0, and then it will come out of yellow. Same for blue bold, 255, 255, and then 0, and then you get this. Okay, so this could be useful for later. Let's close this terminal windows uh, window. And let's get uh, installed. Let's get this installed. So we go to GitHub um, WFJM, as you can see here. WFJM is the uh, link to GitHub, and then we clone this, copy the the clone directory, and do something like this. Uh, I already have it installed here, but I'll reinstall it again. So I remove this. Remove. Uh, Okay, and we just install it with git clone and link. Oops, the link didn't copy. Copied. Okay. And we do this. And since this is a very small um, um, repository, it comes down very quickly. And then one thing I do to make this easier to access it. I move this from MBS 3.j lang test to MBS 3.j well, to MBS 3.8 lang, and I'll tell you why. Because there is an executable inside here, inside this uh, directory that we need to define a path variable to, and that's just too difficult to write and type and uh, prone to errors. So I just moved it to uh, MBS 3.8 lang, and now before we do any work in there. We go to the home directory of root, which is where I execute this. Don't, it doesn't have to be root, it could be any user. In fact, it's better if it's not root, as some of my viewers will immediately point out. Um, but I'm at home here and I do like to work as root and that's just the way I roll. Um, so you, what you want to do is export. Oops. So, and you type export path equals dollar path and then the route to your uh, just down, downloaded um, repository so for me it would be root slash mbs 3.8 lang slash bin okay so this is very important uh, so we export this variable now obviously we would have to run a bash again to have um, that path now defined and the best way to test is if you type the name of the executable we will be using herc js and that is not visible now so lang bin and so it's there but we don't have a variable to it yet so let's create a new screen session what is wrong uh, let's go check out my bash RC. Oops, wrong place. Uh, export path dollar path. Oh, I see. This should be a semicolon. 
that was the error. Let's create a new bash, and let's load up a new bash environment. And now, if I type herb GIS, yeah, it's there. So uh, now that we have this, we go to mbst.838 lan. And um, so we could already uh, run the compiler tests here. Um, the best way probably to show this is if I have, well, let's take the spare session we have here. Um, let's attach to it. And so this is, as you know, let's cancel MF1 reporter, it's annoying. But this is our Hercules uh, window running. And as you can see here, we have two CPUs. It's not doing much now. And the way to use this will be, let's make this window smaller. All we really know, want to see is the activity here. So MIPS, million instructions per second, and IO started per second, and the CPU busy. That's all we really need to know. So we make this our main window for now. So we can see what's going on. And then um, we have this window. Let's resize so this everything fits neatly on our desktop. Uh, I think this will be the best way to do it, yeah. And actually, I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller so we can see the output scrolling. So there's two ways to execute these jobs either onto the printer itself, which of course is a file in our environment. Um, and we can go here to MVS root, MVS 8, print, and we can do tail, which is default class A printer. Okay, so we should be seeing some output scrolling here when we launch jobs. I hope you're following. If you're not following, just freeze the video. Um, and uh, and then uh, the jobs will be defined here in jobs, okay? And the way to do that would be to say make, and if we make, it converts all these JS jobs uh, using templates that Walter has in other directories into JCL jobs. But before we do that, I wanna go and change some of the templates. So we know that the, the source code is all in codes, a bin is the uh, executable to execute the jobs and then JCL is where we have the template. So let's go to JCL. I want to change some stuff. Um, so J job A60, I want all assembler to go to the held output for instance. So let's do that. We see here this is the template for all assembler. Let's go in there and if you go in there uh, the, there's a few things to change. So I make this herp zero one assembler and I change here. Oh. And I call it assembler. Walter F. Muller. And change the output class to H so that all the assembler jobs we will be executing we can see through the terminal session uh, that we have here okay I hope you're following me here so follow me here uh, so far and uh, let's also do the, the same for let's say um, PL1 job uh, PL1 let's go change it here and I know that Walter would do this differently but this is uh, I want to do it. So um, you can do any way you want. PL1 Walter F. Muller. I don't know what F stands for, but it's probably second name, probably Fred or something. Um, okay. So we save this. And this is going to be the template that the make command uses. Uh, Walter did a very smart thing here. He uses the new make command, which not all mainframe people will know. It's a utility to create uh, uh, from a collection of source code to create uh, binaries. And you should read the man page for make if you don't know it well. Um, all the other people who work with Linux extensively or Unix extensively will know make very well. So now we can go to jobs and we can type make and this will create all 
the, uh, the jobs. So now you will see that we have, suddenly we have JCL jobs. So these are the jobs we, will be, that we can submit. And they use the templates we just changed. So we know that all assembler and all PL1 will go to the held output queue, which we can only, which we can best view with um, the terminal session. All other ones will be scrolling here in the tail that I'm doing of the of the printer file. So why don't we start, for instance, by submitting some Fortran H um, and time those. So let's first execute Fortran G jobs and time. And um, so let's do ECJLIS for G JCL. Okay, if you do that, asterisk 4G will select only the 4G and only the JCL jobs. And you should see here the MIPS rate go up immediately, the IOs, and we should see some output because the output from Fortran still goes to class A, which is the, the printer we're following here. Um, so let's get this going. Oops. I spelled it 4G JCL. Okay, and as you can see here, the CPU rate is going up to 300 MIPS or so which is back in the days would have been an amazing mainframe. And we should soon see here, yeah, did you see that? There's a prime number scrolling by on a printer and that's it. So this took, what, um, I would say three, four seconds. Let's try the same with Fortran H. Obviously the compilation may take a bit longer, but the execution will be quite a bit faster. And as you can see, we already had the output going coming out. Yeah, it seemed a little bit faster. Um, this was optimized according to Walter. Um, this was optimized with, um, as you can see here, with uh, option two, which is full optimization. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, this was Fortran Age optimizes with full optimization, GCC also and PL1 also with full optimization. Now let's see if we execute an assembler uh, language test, ASM, JCL. We should be able to see this in the output queue. Um, let's take note of the, um, let's get out of here first, 3.8. And already, as you can see, we have been running this already for a while. So let's purge, purge all these jobs. Okay. Okay, so we purge quite a few. Okay, back here again. Let's execute all the assembler jobs. And we should start to see them appearing here. And here they are. Okay, so let's pick one. This was just executed, return codes all zero. And let's see what this job does. Yeah, this calculates pies and checks how many pies there are within a given range. The okay, range of one to 10, there's four. One to uh, 100,000, there's 9,592, et cetera, et cetera. So this would be one example. Um, so we can, for instance, uh, run the same for PL1 and see how much slower PL1 would be. And I assume these are the same algorithms, just programmed in different languages. So let's see if we can run the PL1 and see how slow this was. So this job took um, one second, okay, for calculating this matrix here. So what we have to find is a PL1 program that produces the same kind of output and see if it's faster than one second or slower. I would, I would think it's slower. So let's execute this. And here the CPU goes up. And we should see now P jobs, yeah, PL. And let's go find something that looks like the output we saw for, okay, there's a, a minor compiler warning here. See if this produces. Oh, this is a sinoid curve. Let's see if this is the output. Let's go to the bottom. No, this is an instruction timing. What this job does, it 
times instructions, register, register instructions, etc. And then we have probably register the storage, etc. Um, but let's check if this is it. Yes. Okay, so let's check how fast. This is the same as the assembler. This is job. What job is this? Job 160. And so let's see. So this took also one second. <laughs> um, this is just due to the fact that uh, this computer is just amazingly fast. It's an Intel Nuke with an i7 processor uh, running at 3.4 gigahertz. It's just incredibly fast. Um, and it's difficult to time these things on such small numbers. The numbers would have to be much, much higher, which of course then creates problems with the, with the size of integers on 24-bit and 31-bit um, compilers. So it's really difficult to test this one against the other because the computer is just so fast. Um, but maybe we can see it from other code. Let's see what we have here, what this job does. Okay, I think this um, this job here uh, tests the calling of uh, other C sections to see how uh, much overhead there is um, in calling other uh, C sections. Um, of course, in assembler, it's it's very very fast. Um, but uh, let's see the execution time here. This took 30 seconds. Um, I don't know if there is something similar in assembler because in assembler, this really is very trivial. Um, but let's see, S3220C4. Maybe this gives us a hint on how to find the other one. So, yeah, this looks like it will be the same. Yeah, this is the same job. And so this ran in three seconds and Pure one ran in 33 seconds. So you can see here the overhead um, of the PL1 runtime environment and the, and the way that the PL1 sets up the calling of, uh, of other C sections, um, uh, so in code sections. So that, that is, that is a great way to see the difference between assembler and, uh, and PL1. In this case, this is 11 times lower than assembler. I'm sure if we ran the same thing with Algo, we'll see that Algo is also extremely slow. I've been following some conversations on the Hercules mailing list, on the TK4 mailing list, where Walter shows some um, benchmarks and shows that Algo has a very, very um, poor implementation of, uh, of uh, uh, function calling. So uh, right now, Algo 60 tests will go to the printer, which is kind of hard for us to read. So we can go here and recreate the environment with Algo also going to the to the output queue, so we can look at the outputs. How do we do this? First of all, though, we do an within jobs. We do uh, make clean to clean out, remove all the JCL jobs. Then we go to the JCL directory and we look at job Algo 60 and we change this to why am I changing here the name? I'm changing the name because otherwise it's not going to go to the output queue visible for this user here because I'm logged in as Hercules01. So the job has to be called Hercules01. Um, and um, we change the message class to H. Save this. Go back into jobs and do a make. And this will recreate. Um, all the JCLs, and now we just resubmit Herc G I S A60 JCL, resubmit all those, and we should be now seeing the output here. Yeah, here it is um, in the output queue. I don't know if this is the same. Nope, still waiting for that program to execute. And we 
export it. Hmm. Not that easy to find. This, this is an Hello World program in Algo. One of these is what we're looking for. That's a sine wave. Then this should be the pi number generator. Why don't we see the output here? I'm sure it's one of this. Um, I guess we have to look at the code. Yeah, this is the prime number. And let's look at the code here. Yeah, this is also... That's not it. Nope. Yes, this is the one. So let's see how long this took to execute. This took zero time to execute, which um, to me is weird. I would have to ask um, Walter where the output is. <laughs> he didn't really calculate the output. And I know that PL1 is a quite a bit slower. Um, a algo is quite a bit slower than assembler, so there needs to be something here. Let's just look at this. No. Um, I don't know where the output went. Possibly the output went to the printer as well. Let's go uh, re revisit this, make it clean. JCL. Uh, job. A60. Let's see, message class is age. Why don't we see the output for this thing? working but it's really working very slowly um, don't know why what's going on with the algo here I will have to ask um, well, let's see. yeah so this is the code that we're actually those 10 million executions not sure what's going on but um, I would have to talk to Walter about this uh, but here you can see how to run this now this is also going to be useful if you want to test benchmark one hardware against the other just run the same output here um, important you know that you enable several CPUs uh, I enable two CPUs which is what MBS 3.8 supports as a maximum don't do more than two you will crash, but um, but it runs very, very well with two CPUs. And so I enable that in the configuration directory. If you don't know how to do that, I have a previous videos on, video on that. You just go to conf um, of your TK4 and then TK4 and enable two CPUs here. Okay, here and here, and then you'll have two CPUs. Uh, I should also change once and for all my time zone here so I'm on central time and um, and the next time you run you'll have two CPUs so this is about it uh, I think this is a great uh, test uh, suite that Walter put together it's useful for a lot of things um, the instruction timings um, 
um, jobs that he has are really important for seeing how Hercules itself as an emulator is progressing over time. There should be no regression in terms of execution and performance. As I said before, every mainframe instruction emulated by Hercules is, results in about 100 or so Intel instructions or whatever uh, underlying hardware you have. Uh, so a program running on, emula on, on the Hercules emulator runs about 100 times slower than it would run if it had real hardware execution of those, those instructions. This doesn't take away from the fact that every modern mainframe, uh, Z14, 13, 12, 11s and, and the 10s, I think, uh, going back about a good 15 years or so, uh, they're all really just power CPUs um, um, emulating the, uh, the mainframe instruction sets at a very low level. So it's not really hardware emulation, it's a mix of hardware and microcode emulation of the mainframe architecture on the power of CPU, uh, but it's different than running it um, as a pure software solution such as Hercules. But be aware that the mainframe uh, processor as such, executing S370 and Z instructions uh, cleanly on the hardware does not exist anymore and hasn't been around for a while. It's all, it's all emulated and it's all, um, uh, it's all running as a, as a level layer above the power CPU, which of course is quite a bit faster because the power CPU runs up to five, five and a half gigahertz whereas Intel's stop at four. Um, but there is no more purpose-built uh, S370 or Z instruction CPU anymore these days. So that, that is a thing of the past. Anyway, so play with it. Uh, this is how, you know, all I wanted to show is how to work with this thing, how to play with it. Um, we showed how to uh, create the environment. The path variable is very important. Don't forget um, to set your path variable in your in your shell so export this is if you use bash as, such as I do if you use something else then check how to uh, reset the path variable uh, but it is important and um, you use the make command we showed and then how to change uh, the template so you can look at them in the in the output queue viewer of uh, RFE if you want that um, so last thing that I want to do is just execute all the jobs at once. So we're going to go here and we just now run curve G I S. So we run them all and this will take about a good 10, 15 minutes on this very fast computer uh, to execute. One cool thing we can do is we can go look um, with the IMON system monitor what's going on. And you see here a busy system. This will be a busy system very similar to what I used to see back in the 80s when I, worked in, when I was working on a real mainframe. And here you have the output, by the way, uh, scrolling. Um, this was a busy system back in those days and um, constantly busy, all the channels working hard, all the, uh, all the uh, DAST is working hard. So here the channels are all quite busy. That's what a busy system looks like, and that's how it should look like. And um, and I think we'll just let this run and watch this for a little bit, as I can be, while we also watch the output um, scrolling by here. And uh, I'll make the music at this point a little bit uh, louder so we can have cool, good music um, while we watch this. By the way, it's called Android Night. Um, Nightland, I think that's the name of the song. I like it very much. I like synth music from the 80s. Um, and uh, oh, this is already finished. Okay, so why don't I just restart it again and get the system working again? So, that's it. Um, I hope you have a great beginning to the new year. It's been a pleasure for the last year to make those videos for you. Thank you for all the encouraging comments. I just got a great comment from a chap in, uh, in Japan who uh, wants to contribute to my Patreon channel. Thank you very much, um, uh, Roland. And, um, and uh, have a great time. Thank you so much. Goodbye. And please do subscribe to my channel to get notifications of future videos. If you like this particular video, press on the thumbs up button. Thank you.